At the age of 16, Jiri Stracker attacked a total of 11 women between 17 February and 16 May 1985. Three women did not survive his attack. He attempted murder on two women. The motive for his attacks was abnormal aggression with a tendency to sadism and necrosadism. In addition to these attacks, he was also tried for five acts of abuse, three robberies and six thefts. All the murders committed by Stracker caused considerable unrest among Prague women, and especially women outside Prague, who were to take part in the practice of the Spartakiad. For this reason, he is also called the Spartakiad killer. As a juvenile, Jiri Stracker was sentenced to the highest possible sentence that could be imposed on him, imprisonment for ten years. At the same time, he was prescribed protective psychiatric, sexological treatment. If he had been two years older at the time of the crime, he would probably have been sentenced to death. Jiri Stracker came from three siblings and from a complete and orderly family. The father was a bricklayer who often worked abroad and the mother a warehouse worker. He was mostly raised by a mother who was strict with him. He was often corporally punished for various offences. Although he had above-average intelligence, he graduated from elementary school with average achievement. In September 1983 he joined the boarding school in Storhof near Kladno in the field of minor, mechanizer. His academic results were average. He also committed several petty thefts in the school. He committed his first attack on a woman on February 17, 1985, around 9 p.m. in Prague on a path in a wooded gorge near Novodvorska Street. After a short follow-up, he attacked a 20-year-old restorer, knocked her to the ground and began to strangle her. The woman defended herself hard. After about five minutes of the match, Stracker stopped in the active attack, but remained lying on the woman. The victim managed to establish verbal contact with Stracker and persuaded him to go to the apartment with her. So they got to a lighted place and to the first residential houses with lit windows. She cried out as he tried to unbutton her winter jacket, roll up her skirt, and kiss. Magpie was frightened that someone might come to help the attacked woman, and he gave up another attack and left the place without a word. Then he took the night train to the dormitory. The attacked woman did not consider Stracker's actions dangerous at all and did not report the attack to the police at all. He attacked a 23-year-old woman from behind at almost the same place on April 8, 1985 and began strangling her until she fainted. He dragged her out of the way between the trees and bushes. As she began to move, he stuffed clay and leaves into her mouth. Then he undressed her and had intercourse with her. Because she still showed signs of life after violent intercourse, he blocked her nostrils with leaves and added clay, stones and finally panties to her mouth. Before leaving the scene, he turned the victim on her stomach, ripped a silver chain from her neck, and threw the leaves. He searched the victim's clothes. He found only the lighter he had kept. He then wore the chain around his neck. After the crime, he went to the station and then by the morning train to the school. Less than a month later, on May 4, 1985, he took a train after midnight. He noticed a woman in the train. When she got off before the final stop in Prague, Klubertin, he also got off and started watching her. As she approached her home and began looking for the keys to the apartment, he attacked her from behind, strangled her, and towed her to a parked van with a tarpaulin. Then he wrapped the rope around her neck and tied the rope in two knots. He pulled the unconscious woman under the tarp of a van. Before that, however, he pulled two silver bracelets, two rings, and a digital watch from her hand. Finding out that the woman was much older than him had imagined, he abandoned abuse. He took the woman's plastic bag and purse and went to the train stop. He checked the bag and purse under the street lamp. He only took cigarettes and 950 Czech Karun. He tossed the jewellery into the bushes, he tossed her purse and bag into the canal and took the train to the city. He performed at the Sokolovska station. Fortunately, the woman managed to remove the throat on her neck, which she did not help to remove on her own, ring the doorbell of one house and call for help. After a short while, Stracker attacked again. He got on the train again at the Sokolovska station and drove again towards Hlubertin. However, 
he got off a stop earlier than before. A thirty-year-old doctor spoke with him. He followed her at a distance of ten meters, and when she reached a less frequented place, he grabbed her by the neck from behind and pulled her by a block of houses. As the woman struggled to defend herself, he took her shoe in his hand and struck her in the head with her heels several times until she fainted. Then he undressed her and had intercourse with her. When he found the woman unconscious, she knelt on her neck, ripped the hanger from her bra, and wrapped it around her neck. He then made two knots under her neck. He then stole two hundred Czech karun and cigarettes from the woman's purse and plastic bag. He dropped the other things. Then he took the train back to the city and from there by the morning train to the school. He told the prosecutor. Jerry Stracker carried out the last murderous attack on the 16th of May 1985. He took a 70 cm cm rope at home and told his mother that he was leaving for a boarding school. He was still wandering around Prague. He walked around Dijvis at night. Near the park, he met a 30-year-old woman and began watching her again. After a while he attacked. He grabbed her by the neck from behind, dragged her into the house, and then into the cellar. There he laid her on the ground and pulled her neck with a prepared rope. Then he undressed her and had intercourse with her. The woman grunted, moved, but did not actively defend herself. That's why he pulled her neck with the belt of her sweater. He was arrested at the school six days later. More than a hundred interrogations, expert opinions and other investigations proved that Jiri Stracker, if he had not been arrested, would have murdered again. In addition to these attacks, on the evening of March 15, 1985, he attacked an 18-year-old student, whom he only wanted to rob. As she unlocked the front door of the house, he struck her in the back with a cobblestone. When the girl fell to the ground and started calling for help, he ripped out her plastic bag and ran away. In the bag he found 260 Czech karun, 10 Tuzik's vouchers and biscuits, which he ate just around the corner. He tossed the other things out of the bag. Ten days later, intending to steal a woman's purse, he attacked a 19-year-old student at night by wrapping her arms around her from behind, knocking her on her back and trying to pull the purse off her shoulder. However, the student held the purse tightly and called for help. He only managed to pull out purse for the third time. In addition, the student chased him and only a few streets from the place of the assault he managed to disappear from the eyes of the pursuer. Another attacker was an 18-year-old girl, whom Stracker tried to abuse on April 2, 1985, after midnight. However, in this case, the girl contacted Strock directly at the train stop. Magpie offered to accompany her so that nothing would happen to her. He prevented her from entering the door in front of the house and began to touch her. When she shouted for help, Stracker let her go. However, as she shoved the key into the lock, Stracker grabbed her by the neck from behind and pushed her until she was unconscious. When she woke up, she found that she was undressed and suggested that they go into the house. In the hallway of the house, she took advantage of the attacker's momentary inattention, ran to the raised ground floor, and rang the bells of the tenants. Magpie scolded her and ran out of the house. At the same time, however, he stole her bag with documents and a wallet with 500 Czech karun. Jerry Stracker cooperated in the investigation of his actions and described the individual attacks in detail and willingly, without feeling any remorse. According to psychiatrists, his special trait was complete immorality and the absence of emotion, and to the extent found, these traits are rare in other adult perpetrators of murder. Stracker's danger was increased by very good intelligence, quick orientation, prompt action, fearlessness, good physical equipment, and a deceptive appearance. During one of the reconstructions at the crime scene, the citizens asked the police to extradite Jerry Stracker for lynching. He was also attacked in prison. His fellow prisoners allegedly dug up his genitals. In May 1994, Stracker was released from prison and placed in a closed sexology department of a psychiatric hospital in Prague, Bornis, where he undergoes protective psychiatric and sexology treatment. He underwent castration while still in prison. However, he refused stereotactic surgery. At present, Jerry Stracker has the possibility of long-term walks. Using an advertisement, he found a girlfriend two years older, 
who was the mother of three children. He trained as a baker in prison, was baptized, and became interested in the evangelical faith. After the court verdict, the parents moved from Prague to Moravia and never came to terms with their son's actions. It was found from two independent sources that he tried drugs on walks given by doctors of a psychiatric hospital. Based on the decision of the Opava District Court, Jury Strock's institutional treatment was cancelled and on December 24, 2004, he was released from the Opava Psychiatric Hospital.